Wi-Fi Sheep would like to say a huge thank you to all of you that kindly support us. Help us continue to bring new videos like this. Join patreon.com forward slash Wi-Fi Sheep from just $1 a month. Previously on Wi-Fi Sheep, we talked about the Raspberry Pi Zero and how with this hat adapter board, you could make the Zero into a possible desktop computer. One of the things we looked at was which operating system to use, and we looked at three options. The latest version of the official Raspberry Pi OS, another version of Linux called Diet Pi, and our very own RiskOS Direct. Well, as it turned out, RiskOS Direct was the quickest in our unscientific test, and Raspberry Pi OS was the slowest. However, RiskOS Direct doesn't do everything that Linux does. It's not a Linux distribution. So sometimes, and for some projects, you do need to have a Linux distribution. And this is where DietPy came in. It's binary compatible with Raspberry Pi OS. It's built on the Debian Buster version of the Linux operating system, but it's stripped down and compiled in such a way that it actually runs with the bare minimal spec of RAM and disk space, hence making it run a lot faster. At the end of the video, I said we would go into more detail about DietPy. So here we are today, and we're going to set up a fresh DietPy distribution. But first, a quick reminder that Wi-Fi Sheep is partnered with PCBWay.com. If you have a need for inexpensive, high quality, professional PCBs, then look no further than PCBWay.com. In our recent video, I uploaded a custom GERDA file to my free PCBWay user account and then went through the whole online ordering process. Within less than two weeks, the finished PCBs were with me ready for assembly. So do go and check out that video and if you haven't done already, do register for your free account at PCBWay.com. Okay, so for today's demonstration, we could use the Pi Zero rig again, that would work perfectly fine. But I think we may upgrade a little bit and I found a spare Raspberry Pi 2. This is one of the original Raspberry Pi 2s. Which I think would be fine for our needs. So we have here, I've added some heat sinks, but this is, as I said, a stock Raspberry Pi 2 board from 2014, I think it was. And we also need our SD card. Uh, I've already labelled it up as DietPi. This is a 4 gig SD card. So let's get a new version of DietPi flashed onto this card. Okay, so let's start by going to dietpi.com and brings up this website. And we can go to downloads. And you'll notice that DietPi is not just for the Raspberry Pi, it actually supports a whole host of different ARM based platforms, including some virtual machines. Uh, what we want is the Raspberry Pi and it's Raspberry Pi all models and we can just click to download and that will download a .7z file for us which depending on how fast your internet connection is may take a few moments to come down. So I've now just uncompressed the dot. 7z file and we have this .img file that we now need to flash to an SD card so we'll put a 4 gigabyte SD card into an adapter into the side of the MacBook and then for this I'm going to use Belina Etcher to write the disk image. The Raspberry Pi now has its own image writing software but I found it doesn't actually work properly with DietPi for some reason but Etcher is fine so this is exactly the same process now for PC, Mac or Linux so we'll click select image and there is our image so we'll click open make sure we get the correct location which in this case is the apple sd card reader very important to make sure you are actually pointing at the right drive and then we click flash it'll then ask for password authorization And it will now start the process to flash and then verify the card. 
Once we've done that, we can eject the SD card from the Mac and we'll head back over to the Raspberry Pi. So we've got Pi 2 bulb, we've got our SD card, which we're going to fit underneath. I've got here HDMI video, that's going into my capture card and my TV monitor. We will need to add a keyboard and mouse, obviously. And I've got power supply. The Pi 2 took the older micro USB standard, not the USB C seen on the Pi 4 now. And I will put a keyboard and mouse in in a minute. But we also need an internet connection for setup. Uh, these boards don't have Wi Fi, so I do actually have cabled Ethernet which is connected downstairs to the router. This stuff runs all through the house. If you haven't got a home network that's actually cabled like this, you can get these patch leads very cheap. There's a Cat5 or Cat6 Ethernet patch leads, and it's probably best to take your Pi downstairs to wherever your router is and set it up next to it on the table or something, just for the setup process. But luckily here, I can actually do this here on the workbench, so we'll just plug in. And I'll grab myself a keyboard, and I've got a mouse here, find the end of that. So I'll pop a mouse in, and I'll just grab a keyboard, and we should be ready to go. Okay, so we're all set up and the new flashed card is in the Raspberry Pi 2. So with a bit of luck, this will boot first time and we'll do an initial setup script. So let's see what happens. So as always with Linux distributions, when you're booting them for the first time, they generally try to unpack things, install things and set various stuff up. So the first boot of DietPi is normally going to be longer than it will in subsequent boots. And also notice this build launches a lightweight SSH as standard. So there we are. We're now at uh, login and it gives you the default login for root, which is and the password is dietpy. So we'll hit enter and we'll say we're root. And we want to log in as dietpy. This is the GPL version 2 license, so we'll say OK. And DietPi is now updating everything from the current repository lists available. This is all from, mainly from the um, Debian uh, Buster servers. So you can actually see here it's actually looking for Raspbian Buster and they're uh, taking packages from that at the moment. Again, as stressed before, this is a one time process that we won't have to repeat every boot. So. You may remember in the previous video, we actually got this booted up in about a minute, including to a desktop, uh, which isn't bad. So uh, this is why it's always best to do the setup if you can on slightly faster, newer Raspberry Pis, even if you intend to run it on older, slower hardware. OK, we're done. So we're now back into the main setup menus and it goes through a series of uh, questions. We use the arrow keys to navigate up and down and then we can hit enter or we can roll down to select OK. So the first question is do we want to join the uh, Diet Pi survey? Uh, I'm going to say I'm going to opt out of that. So it's just going to take that out. There we go. It says do you want to change the password? Uh, I, I'm going to say yes. And we'll just enter a new password. OK. This is changing the uh, universal password as well. It then says, do you want to, uh, the serial console, do you want to uh, currently disable it? I'll say OK. It, if you're going to use the serial terminal, then obviously you need to keep that running, so you'd hit cancel. I'll hit OK because it says it doesn't stop anything from actually working. So it's just going through some network settings now. OK, and then here is the main optimization menu. Uh, so this is DietPy software. So we can go to DietPy config, and it gives us display options, audio options, network options auto start options, tools, uh, let's just have a quick check on 
advanced options. Um, so you can actually set your frequencies, USB currents, uh, time sync, Bluetooth on off, that sort of thing. So you get the idea. So we'll go back. We'll exit out. Say OK. So we're back to software. Uh, what's really nice here is it has options for optimized software and additional software. So we can go to optimized, and this is the software list of everything that's been specially op optimized to run as fast and as efficiently as possible on DietPi. DietPi does not come as default with any kind of desktop uh, click and point environment. So this is as far as you get. So you have to add that. And you see the first ones here are desktops you can add. So I'm going to add Alex DE because it's an ultralight desktop space. So we will hit space and we can select what we want. You can add others. So mate, XFCE is one of my favorites, not as lightweight. GNU or GNU's step is um, quite an interesting one. It's based on OpenStep, which was the next step uh, operating system from Steve Jobs. That was the next cube. And this is actually the front end of that. This all morphed into Mac OS X originally. So this is the original kind of pre-Apple interface. I have had a play of it. It's uh, probably a video in itself because it's quite strange. But um, so it's all categorized for you. You've got gaming down here. You can actually add uh, tools for Minecraft is on here. Wi-Fi support, remote access, all sorts of stuff on here. I think we'll say that's okay for the moment. So hit enter. So it says this is what we're going to install. So we'll go okay. And now we can set up as automatic and as diet pie. We can ask for automatic login again. Diet Pi. And you see down here you can actually add retro uh, retro Pi if you wanted to to the system. So with a little bit of luck we can say I think that's all we want to do at the minute. So we'll say okay. And we can exit. So now we can select install. And we'll say OK to start installing these additional applications we want to put onto our build of DietPy. And again, depending on how fast your internet connection is, how busy the repository servers are, and also how much software you've physically chosen to install, this will vary in time from a few minutes to a good half hour. OK, so we're a good 15 minutes later now, so that did take a fair while to get sorted. Uh, now DietPi is asking us about the memory configuration. So because we've loaded the desktop modules, it's detecting that it needs more GPU or video RAM. Now the Raspberry Pi's main program RAM and the RAM used for graphics display is shared. So you have what's called a memory split. So by default, it's set to 16 megabytes and it's recommending 64 megabytes. Now we have a one gig uh, RAM cache here on this Raspberry Pi 2. So we'll say OK. It's always best to give more graphics memory to the GPU if you can afford to do it. And it's now just finishing up the installation. So it now says a reboot is required for the filing system. So we'll say OK because we don't have a choice. So this will give us a better indication of uh, the real boot time for Diet Pi here on a Raspberry Pi 2. So we just hit sudo start x. And you can see this is now the installed uh, lightweight Diet Pi desktop. And that's actually went through very fast indeed. And we've got a directory. We've got configuration tools, which we can uh, execute in the terminal. And so you can actually access 
the launcher, the software, and the configuration from the desktop. We've also got the uh, package manager there, or file manager. And again, we can just say to execute. And that gives you um, a very, very minimal system, but it is all there. Uh, let's click on terminal. And let's just see if we've got what we have, uh, a Python on the system. So Python, I doubt there's a Python, nope. So if we say Python free, there is a Python free interpreter. And just remember your syntax for free. And the print command does work. And when you're done, exit. So it does have a very basic Python 3 installed. And that's fundamentally it. So obviously, if you needed to install other software, you can add more software. We can execute this into terminal. And uh, what we got. So let's have a look at additional software. And here is all the different software which we can actually install. This is the stuff that's not optimized, but it's just stuff that's on the system. Um, we go software optimized. We could then look at adding a web browser, for example. We do actually have Firefox. And ex execute. There we go, Mozilla Firefox. Again, it may speed up on a second run. Up in the uh, privacy setting, yeah. There we go. Uh, so not the fastest thing in the world, but hey, it's there, and we have a web browser built in or standard. So there you are. That's fundamentally Firefox and that's sort of how it works. You can of course add any compatible uh, Linux software you wanted. Maybe it has to be compatible with the ARM architecture of the Raspberry Pi. Uh, fundamentally, this is a much more lighter way of running and if you ran this even on a faster pi like a pi 4 you could save so much processing time and memory to actually put that into dedicated programs you want to run rather than trying to uh, run unnecessary stuff on the system or bloatware as i call it which unfortunately other distributions including the main formerly raspbian but now raspberry pi os still has because it's kind of trying to do something for everybody so this is a very, very stripped down version, but it's well worth a look at. So as ever, all the links to everything we've talked about is in the description to this video. If you haven't done already, do go and check us out on Twitter. It's at Wi-Fi Sheep on Twitter. And if you want to support the channel, please do go and have a look at our Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash Wi-Fi Sheep. As ever, thank you so much for your company, and I'll see you real soon right here in the channel. Until next time, bye for now. Thank <laughs> you.